building a piece of exquisite technology today that takes 20 years to develop to solve the problem of today has to be able to be modified or has to be able to be adjusted to handle the future threat that we don't quite know about yet. Hey, welcome to The Lowdown. Today we're talking about the F-35, specifically some recent news about the Block 4 upgrade, which has been delayed. Now, the F-35 has become the cornerstone of modern air power, and it's not only doing it for the United States, but numerous allies across the globe. And we've seen it, obviously, in action over the last few months in high-end contested environments. But today, we'll cover the Pentagon's move to scale back the Block 4 upgrade. This comes amid some serious delays. Plus, we're also going to talk about Lockheed simultaneously pitching the Ferrari mode of the F-35, that stopgap between fifth generation and sixth generation fighter, the next generation air dominance fighter or NGAD. And this is all based upon a GAO, the Government Accountability Office's report that came out at the beginning of September, talking about Block 4 and the F-35 delays that are ongoing. So welcome into the lowdown. We're talking everything aviation and military. If you're new here, this channel is relatively new. It's spun off the Afterburn podcast. We break down everything that's happening in the aviation and defense industry across the globe, things that I think you'll find interesting. So one, make sure you check out our newsletter down below. If you want to support the channel, you can join in over on Patreon or grab some merch and swag. That's the best way to do it. But today, let's jump into the F-35 program, which has been now around for several decades. This was a unique concept to replace multiple aircraft across multiple nations and across multiple needs that evolved into the F-35A, B, and C. Three variants for three distinct roles when it comes to the getting into the fight. The F-35A taking off from runways. Thank the United States Air Force and our allies that, again, like pieces of concrete, attached to the ground. The F-35B, that vertical takeoff and landing, replacing the Harrier jump jet, if you will. And then the F-35C, a little more beefy landing gear, a little more beefy internal components to take the beating of landing on a boat and a little extra gas, you know, because a little heavier. So those three variants solving multiple problems across the scope, but again, all addressing near-peer advanced threats in contested environments. Now, so far, over a thousand F-35s have been produced and delivered across the globe. In fact, the United States Air Force just accepted its 500th F-35 two weeks ago or in the month of July, which is pretty impressive when you think about the scalability of a complex and advanced jet. Now, in this short time span, modern Air Forces have spun these jets up, integrated their training pipeline to support it, logistics pipeline, all in, I would say, a relatively short time span when you really start thinking about it. And then these jets have deployed to the Middle East, the Pacific, and they've been involved in high-end fights we've seen in the past few months. So they've survived advanced threats. They have eliminated threats. But this doesn't come without a lot of scrutiny because the F-35 program has faced significant delays, cost overruns, and now Block 4 specifically has more woes. Now, what is Block 4? This was part of the process of upgrading the F-35. The F-35 was designed on a concept of a building block approach, more or less, to paraphrase. Every iteration, every block is going to provide improvements. Block 4 takes the F-35 to the full beast mode, to what it really is and truly intended to be when this thing was designed. It is building upon technology refreshes, TR-3 being the latest technology refresh, which has had significant delays and then ultimately has delayed this Block 4 upgrade. And now the Pentagon has accepted the fact that Block 4 is going to be delayed even further. The so Block 4 designed to deliver 66 key capability upgrades by 2026, boosting weapons capability, electronic warfare capability, sensor fusion, all to go out there and be able to counter high-end near-peer threats that are developed by countries like China or Russia or whoever might build comparable technology. Yeah, the latest GAO findings, again, the Government Accountability Office, showed a stark contrast to that reality. The program so far is $6 billion in overrun. Originally slated to cost $10.6 billion, estimated to be at $16.5 billion in 2021 dollars, and that figure is going to be updated later on this year. Again, we got some lag when it comes to the government and doing these researches. So I can only make an assumption that four years later, when they reassess this, that Block 4 overrun is going to be significantly more expensive. So now, instead of that 2026 delivery of Block 4, looking at early 2030s, like 2031 potentially, before we get this. This rescope keeps some core capability upgrades, but has also eliminated 
many of them. So what's being kept? There will be improvements to electronic warfare, expanded weapons capability, because right now only carrying four internal AMRAMs. The plan is six, better communications, but it's going to shelve some power-hungry features like hyperspectral sensors or directed energy. For pilots, this means keeping six internal air-to-air missiles. That's a plus, like the AIM-120 Delta, the latest and greatest AMRAM, or heavy standoff weapons, or the GBU-53 Stormbreaker, the AIM-9X Sidewinder. These all remain part of the F-35's complement. Electronic warfare suite is still going to be improved with the AN-ASQ-239 Barracuda from BAE Systems that features a Durfum jammer, multispectral threat detection and deception, automated management to be able to tackle high-end threats and integrated air defense systems such as the S-400. Improved emitter geolocation, so finding those integrated air defense radar sites, boosting survivability against hypersonic threats, electronic attack protection. So all these kind of remain are going to get boosted as part of this Block 4 upgrade. And then when it comes to sensor fusion, the AN-APG-81 radar, the AESA radar, electronic optical targeting system, EOTS, all this is going to get improvements with 360 degree, even though it has that now, threat detection, but again, enhancing and improving that for the pilot when it comes to operating F-35 Block 4. And I would also make some assumptions that, you know, this is just going to be better integration with the B-21, which, oh, by the way, has had its second flight this past week. The Department of Defense stopped accepting F-35s a couple years ago because of TR-3 delays and a lack of capability of what TR-3 rolling off the assembly line was able to do versus what it was supposed to do. TR-3 was a nearly a $2 billion refresh, which upgraded processing power to nearly 20 times more data, and it's three years behind, with the full delivery of TR-3 being slated for 2026, fixing Bugs in processing power, boot failures. Again, the Department of Defense in 2023 and 2024 stopped accepting deliveries. And then when they finally started accepting deliveries, jets were not combat coded. About 110 of them to be exact. Over 4,000 parts were blamed for shortages, which was double the norm. This included wing flaps, and it ultimately grounded 52 F-35s in January. It left 52 of them grounded in January. Now the F-35 engine. It's the F-135 and it's a powerhouse capable of producing 42,000 pounds of thrust. It's impressive and having flown right next to it or been standing next to it, I mean, it is a powerful motor. Now, while the F-135 motor is impressive, a key component that's not thought about by many is the fact that you need an exorbitant amount of power, not only put this plane through there in supersonic speeds, but to be able to power all the avionics and equipment that goes into it. I'm always amazed by the engine technology. It is really impressive. And then if you talk about the F-35B, you're going to get my opinion on it. That's a whole nother side. But like, it is impressive if we remove all the emotions around the F-35B just to see how that thing transforms. Like, it is impressive. But all of these new sensors, all of these upgrades, it increases the demand on the engine and or the electrical output by over half. It puts a lot of wear and tear, a lot of drain, and the F-135 just cannot sustain that power draw, which has led to the engine core upgrade or the ECU, which is a solution that's about a $2 billion plus redo. And I mean, we probably could just go ahead and multiply that by a factor of three, just the way things normally go. But it's a new compressor, new thermal system, and it's supposed to boost that power by 50%. So it passed its preliminary design review in July 2024, but had some critical design flaws and reviews that were required that slipped this thing out all the way to 2026, with production not starting till 2031. So you can see how this is compounding here. Without it, puts a massive strain on the system with estimated costs of about $38 billion or $2 trillion over the life cycle. It's a massive hit to the acquisition costs, already projected to be nearly half a trillion dollars. Lockheed currently targets delivering 170 to 190 F-35s per year across all of our allied nations, but the GAO finding also flags some concerns with these ongoing delays. Now, interesting aspect here is Lockheed Martin CEO. He is in very active talks, according to a breaking defense article, blending fifth generation and sixth generation technology. Remember, Boeing was awarded the F-47 contract for the next generation air dominance fighter back in the spring. So naturally, Lockheed is trying to go after a piece of the pie. Now, this F-35 Ferrari upgrade right now is being pitched to upgrade anywhere 1,000 to 1,500 F-35s of the 2,300 total that are still left being built to upgrade them to include weapons and advanced stealth coding, 
a better engine and better sensors to kind of bridge that gap between fifth generation and sixth generation. What that looks like, there are a lot of questions out there. So we won't be able to get into really what it is because this is YouTube and not a skiff. But nonetheless, we're having trouble already with TR3 and Block 4, but now we're gonna be talking about doing a five and a half gen plus aircraft. It seems like there's gonna be some challenges with that as well. President Trump even floated the F-55 twin engine upgrade in May, but experts call this a stretch. And my take is, yeah, that's probably a stretch as well. Again, if we just look at our procurement process and how long things take from concept to production, we have a lot of hurdles to overcome. Like we're not just rapidly fielding technology, not at least most companies. But will we need a stopgap between fifth gen and sixth gen? I think that is really realistic. Our procurement process lags way behind, especially in today's world of technology that's ever evolving and evolving really, really fast. Taking years to design, build, procure while threats rapidly evolve. By the time you build your widget to solve problem A or B, now you have to worry about C or D and the tool you were designing to solve these problems over here can't handle it. While we might build the F-35 to handle the S-400 or the future S system out there or enemy air fighter, maybe we're worried about drones. We've seen just how fast this evolution of technology has occurred in the last few years on the battlefield and how it's shaped the battlefield. So building a piece of exquisite technology today that takes 20 years to develop to solve the problem of today has to be able to be modified or has to be able to be adjusted to handle the future threat that we don't quite know about. Yet. So what do you think about this stopgap? I mean, I think ultimately we're going to have to have something. The root cause is for a discussion another day, but I think we can all look at it. this process is broken. It's slow. Again, we're developing very complex things. I don't discount that of how challenging that is and how impressive it is when, again, you're creating these exquisite pieces of technology such as F-35 and you're doing it at scale. That is impressive. But in today's world, will it cut it? All right, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos that are out there and let me know if there's anything else you would like to talk about.